Hey guys, it's Diamond and Jim, the electrician from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. And we took a trip downtown here to the Pagosa Springs uh, Town Center where we're working on the Geothermal Greenhouse Partnership. This is a Growing Spaces Grow Dome invented by Utgar Parsons. He's a local friend of mine. And we are have we just got funded for another dome, a second and a third dome. And if you've noticed out here, this is the community garden that exists. So it's all going to be tying together with community. And what we're doing is we're using the geothermal heat from the largest and deepest hot spring in the world, which is here at this organized crime facility. Um, it's actually right near that box. So the deepest hot spring is right on the San Juan River here. It flows into the river up here and you can go swim in it. It's crazy. But we got through the city we got water that's pumping up into this greenhouse. And the project was supposed to be a huge 10 year plan, but we just got funded by the state to finish the whole project. So there's gonna be a second and a third dome, an innovation dome, a community dome. This is the uh, first dome we finished. We just finished last year and we're doing a soil restoration project in here because we successfully grew for the first season. We sold thousands in tomatoes. And this greenhouse is heated exclusively with geothermal heat. And I made the walkway. <laughs> They're closed, but I have special access. So we're in the largest of the geothermal grow domes. It's a 45 footer approximately. It has a 25 foot ceiling, let's say. Jim? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it has a at least a 5,000 gallon water feature in the rear, which we'll cover. But this thing was infested just weeks ago to a blight and some white fly and some aphid and then a fungus. But you could see now that it is lush and green. What we did was we went and we sourced a yellow pea from the local uh, co-op. It's actually a grain dealer. It's uh, real grain commodities. And for about 22 bucks, you can get a 50 pound bag of pea. He suggested yellow pea because they're delicious. So not only can you restore the soil, but watch. You can eat the pea shoot. No, yeah, they're delicious. So as the soil restoration happens highly successfully, you can see they've already harvested the pea shoot off of here. Now, I just was, we did a video on this. The reason you use peas um, as a soil restorer is because, do you see these white nodules here? These are nitrogen nodules on the root system. And these peas fix nitrogen in the soil. So what you want to do is kill the top aerial part of the plant, eat it for food, leave the roots in the ground, and it's going to provide you with ample uh, nitrogen and green leafy material for a good mulch. And that's the best way to grow organically. It's a type of organic crop rotation and soil restoration simultaneously with food production. And this only happens in a few weeks. Look at the yield in here. We probably have a thousand pounds of pea shoots ready to harvest in a week. Um, and then the soil is going to be perfect for all the starts that we have. And you can see the Pagosa Peak Open School is working on this little area. And we got all of these other groups that have their own little section that we've restored for them to get in and have a real successful start. There's Mrs. Garcia's math group. So a lot going on here. <laughs> real quick, I'll take you by the water feature. And then I'll show you the systems on how they work. So you want to notice the koi fish in there. And we've got some floating hyacinth and some horsetail, which is a native, which is called the pot scrubber plant. And we have a nice water lettuce, which is an invasive in Colorado, but great in your greenhouse. These are all just floating plants. Um, this helps with uh, the thermal mass, and you can see the big fish in here. Yeah. 
<laughs> we got some spinach starts. We're really rocking here. Salad mix is ready to go in. The soil's restored, and now we're just ready to plant the food. So because this has geothermal heat pumping under the subsurface, we installed it in the floor. It flows through here in these pecs, which are evenly spaced. We could keep the temperature in the South San Juans. Notice some more pecs. So what we're doing actually, this is cold air coming in from the outside. We're actually cooling this greenhouse. It's so hot. And it stays between 53 and 58 at all times. So even with the cooling happening during the day, it doesn't get cold. It actually gets warmer at night when we close the vent. But if we need to heat it up, we have a heat exchanger connected to the geothermal water directly in the spring, and we can run heat to each section of the greenhouse. So we can control the environments and make something more tropical or less tropical. And this is an experiment. It's ongoing. But I'm just giving you a peek into the abundance you can have with a small, empty structure like this. You don't need geothermal heat. You just need polycarbonate and a lot of time to figure out these angles. That's how Utgar became famous. Each one of these structures has a different specific geometry to these angles. So a 20-footer does not have anything the same shape as the 45-footer. And therein lies the money. So what you actually just really need to source is these five point connectors and realize what size unit they're for and then you can make your own geodesic dome because you really just need a, a low insulated cement wall which goes into the ground a little bit probably 42 inches here in this case <coughs> so that was an I hope you enjoyed that tour <laughs> And we'll keep you updated as the two other dome, domes get built. <laughs> but that's how you grow food year-round using uh, geothermal heat. Say bye, Jim. Bye, Jim. <laughs>